Would you like to see some of the things I recently purchased? Would you like to see some of the things I recently finished making? If so, stick around because this is the video for you. <laughs> Kitchen Lizzie, my weird little place where I like to create things by sewing or knitting or other crafts. <laughs> and I keep adding more crafts to my list of things to do. <laughs> Not going to talk about th that part today, but I'm going to talk about some things I recently purchased and also two things that I have finally finished. And as of shooting this video today, it's my birthday, July 31st, and I'm also going to talk about a gift that I got to help out with my filming. So let's start with uh, what I finished making. Let's start with that. So also Bunty is not here today. Um, I'm in my dining room. I'm, because now I have uh, some other equipment uh, that will help me film, I can now move around to whatever room I want to be in and I'm not stuck in the bedroom against a boring white background. Um, I just feel like having something a little more interesting in the background um, make, will make the videos a little more enjoyable. That's my opinion. I know when I watch videos and everything's kind of stark white. I I love the videos too, don't get me wrong, I still watch them, I just find them a little less interesting and uh, when I see videos where people have really interesting backgrounds, um, yeah, I just, I find, you know, I get a little more curious. I'm like, oh, you know, what else do they have in their room with them? Because I'm also nosy, so that's part of the other problem. <laughs> but yeah, now I can actually video, or sorry, film in my dining room, my living room, uh, different angles in the bedroom instead of just against the doors because before I actually had to have my camera set up on a tripod on the actual table and uh, yeah it was the only way I could do it. I'll talk about tripod in a minute. Um, it is part of the things I've recently purchased but yeah let's get into what I've recently made. So last a couple of videos ago now I can't remember if it was last video or maybe two videos no it was last video I talked about stash busting um, I have a whole bunch of fabric I need to whittle down before I buy anything else and Halloween's coming <laughs> and I would like to buy some fabric to make some Halloween things so I might buy stuff and kind of divert from the stash busting for a little while um, but one of the fabrics I had, now again, I'm going to insert photos of Bunty wearing these items because uh, you're not going to probably see them very well in this video. But with one of the fabrics, which I believe is, um, was a vintage fabric or is a vintage fabric that I got at a yard sale in my neighborhood, um, I made a Rita blouse. And it has these beautiful flowers on it. Like there's like peonies and violets and some other snapdragons, I think. Anyways, there's a few different flowers on here. Um, I'm going to show a, a photo with a, a close up of the fabric. And yes, I have a lot of Rita blouses, but I love them. They fit really well. <laughs> anyway, so I have done a Rita blouse. And you can find this pattern over at Gertie's Charm. I'll link everything below again, as I usually do. And this sweater, uh, I got distracted from the things I'm supposed to be knitting right now, which is my husband's um, Pac-Man sweater and um, actually there's two things that got me distracted from that. Uh, I, <laughs> the Anouk is the other one and it's, uh, I literally have the sleeves and the button band to do for that, but I saw Bex from uh, Subversa Femme knitting this. <laughs> She posted a photo of her. Hers is a black version. This is, um, I don't know if the color's gonna come out exact, but it's more of a teal, dark teal. Uh, I saw her knit this, and I love cables. I love 
even if it's like a row of cables, I love any knitwear that has cables on it. It's my favorite stitch to do because there's so many different versions and different ways to do it. And when I knit, if I'm just doing like plain stockinette stitch or a rib or a knit stitch for the entire garment, I get bored very quickly. Uh, however, when there's like some lace or cable or uh, intarsia or something involved in it, I love it. I also feel like it goes by faster. Anyway, I'm going to put a close up photo of this because you're not going to see the detail very well in this video, but it's a 1950s dolman sleeve. I guess the dolman's not really coming out very well. Just adjust this slightly. You can sort of see it there. Dolman sleeve, button up cardigan um, with two panels of uh, cable. I don't know if you can see that very well. If not, like I said, I'll put I'll put a few close-up photos um, of the cable detailing and the uh, I'll put like a photo of the pattern. I'll put a link to where the pattern's from. Um, this knit up very quickly. Uh, it is DK. Um, I do work with a lot of DK and worsted, um, not because of the speed of knitting, but because um, in on Southern Ontario where I'm from, I'm in Toronto, the wind chills are insane in the wintertime and I layer. And having heavier knits makes a huge difference. So I really love how this turned out. Um, a couple of things, I added about two inches of length. Um, Bex and I have similar uh, figures and we're both short-waisted. Now a lot of crop cardigans from the 1950s tend to fit me well, like they sit properly on me. However, I did notice, um, and she even mentioned it, that it was a bit shorter than she thought it was going to be. So, and I have a belly, uh, which will all, and large boobs, boobs in a belly which will um, pull the cardigan, the waist of the cardigan up a bit more. So what I did was um, I added two inches in length. I did not adjust the width at all because it is a pattern that has larger sizes. And the length came out perfect. It fits me perfectly. Also, um, I made the sleeves slightly longer. I, I think it's meant to be like a three quarter uh, length um, pattern, but again, Winters here are cold, so I uh, did a wrist length sleeve on it. Um, now my only thing about this pattern that I'm not in love with, but I'm getting used to it. I've had part of, like worn it a couple of times. Um, not to go outside because it is still hot here, it's July, but just to look to see how it fits me. Um, because the dome and sleeve, uh, instead of doing inserted sleeves, the sleeves are knit on. And because of this, uh, you have a, and I'm not sure how well this is going to show up in the video, but um, just looking at the monitor there, uh, the, there is a seam that runs along the top of your shoulder and down the top of your arm which when you normally do inset sleeves, the only seam is underneath, so you don't ever see a seam up here. And I'm not sure how much I like that. Uh, that is kind of the only thing for me that I find a little weird, but maybe I just need to get used to it because I'll be honest, I love this pattern. I love how it fit me, it fits perfectly. Like I don't feel like anything is too tight or fitting weird in the waist or because sometimes to fit my bust, I, I have to um, adjust the waist and, you know, because a lot of patterns from the 50s, you know, um, the waists are much smaller. Anyways, no, this fits me perfectly. <laughs> so would I make this pattern again? Absolutely I would. Um, I wouldn't even let the uh, that top seam deter me. It's the perfect weight with the DK, it's not too heavy. Um, so this could be a really good uh, spring and fall sweater as well. And then in winter, I'll layer with it. So those are the two things that I have recently made. 
Now, just before we move on to the things that I recently, recently purchased, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my birthday. <laughs> I'm not a huge, um, I don't really like to celebrate my birthday. Not an age-related thing at all. Um, and I'm not going to get into the, the whys, really, other than um, I personally feel that there's like a jinx or a curse on my birthday. Uh, not nice things tend to happen on or around my birthday. So I now have decided to not celebrate it on the day. Like meaning having a party or going out and other, other, you know, other than going out for dinner with my husband tonight. Um, so what I've been doing is I'm doing it on a day or a couple of days before. And what we did is this weekend we did a bunch of things that were fun for me to do. Well, my husband enjoyed it too, but, um, and the biggest thing was on Saturday night, we have um, a backyard. Uh, we do share it with our neighbors, but it's a fairly decent sized backyard. And we have a projector and a movie screen. And we do backyard movie nights once in a while. And we did a showing of The Creature from the Black Lagoon, which is one of my all time favorite movies. Um, the first one. I mean, I love all, all the ones that were made, but the first one is my number one. And um, I try to watch it at least once every summer, along with Jaws and sometimes Piranha. <laughs> um, yeah, so we had an, a whole bunch of friends come over. Uh, we watched a cartoon before, and then we watched the actual movie. And um, my husband and I also run uh, a, like a monthly movie night called Killer Bee Cinema. I'll link that below in our neighborhood and um, it's actually at a uh, a gamer bar they have a an, um, second floor and on that second floor they you know they have music or other events so we every Friday the first Friday of every month we have our movie night there um, but this one um, was specifically done for me in our backyard and my friends so that is how I sort of celebrated my birthday <laughs> um, without doing it on the actual day. So, and then I got, you know, some lovely gifts from, from friends. Uh, some of them are behind me here. And flowers, these beautiful flowers. And uh, yeah, so that is what I did for my, I called it my unbirthday. Um, as I said, I'm in my living room, so you're gonna see our china cabinet and the table. Also, this is where I sew. And this is my sewing machine, my Kenmore, which I've had since the early 90s. Oh, no, wait, late 80s, actually, I think. This was a in-house um, machine from um, Hudson's Bay Company. It's been so long. It was either Simpsons, Simpsons Sears, or no, it was the Bay. It was Hudson's Bay Company. And then behind is my serger. Um, what I do is when I need to serge things, I just move the serger onto the dining room table and I search from there and um, it is you can't see it in this video but it's actually sitting on top of my treadle machine which will be the next video after this one so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and just an update on uh, Haslam I am filming I have filmed all the main stuff um, so starting tomorrow, I am going to begin editing all of it. I wanted to film the entire thing and then edit, and then I'll start putting videos up hopefully in a few weeks. I have a feeling though that I'm going to have to reshoot a couple of things as well as do some close-ups of, some, you know, parts of the pattern and things like that. So it is going slower than I thought. However, I want it to be perfect when I finally put it up here um, for everybody that's been waiting for Haslam. So it is happening. I am steps closer. <laughs> so just stay tuned. Hold on. You know, it is coming. So one of the things my husband bought me for my birthday um, was I asked for one of two things as a possibility. One was more of a priority than the other. And the two things were proper studio lights and a, a proper microphone setup. And um, the lights were more important to me than the actual microphone. Um, he does have a microphone somewhere in the office that I could use for now. 
Uh, yeah, so he bought me, I'll insert photos of what I got. They're proper studio lights. Um, they're Westcott. I'm just looking at the box right now. Um, you get two different lights in it. You get like an umbrella style and you get like a box style one. I'm using the umbrella one right now. And I gotta tell you, <laughs> I mean, I'm still working with it to find out, um, it has a dimmer uh, switch for it. Um, I try to figure out which level of light is best. Um, who knows, I might be a little washed out in this one. You know, it might take me a couple of videos to actually get the lighting exactly where I need it. Um, but I gotta tell you, the quality of video of the test stuff I did is like, like miles better than what I've been doing with those little ring lights. Though I gotta say the ring lights in a pinch work. And the other thing I had to recently buy, <laughs> Uh, I had this um, inexpensive tripod, which I bought 15 years ago, maybe, um, maybe longer than that. It was inexpensive because at the time I could not afford, a, you know, an expensive heavy duty tripod. I think it cost me $20. Um, unfortunately, it didn't go very high. I think the highest it went was four, four and a half feet. Uh, it was all aluminum, uh, not very sturdy. And if I was putting my camera on the tripod, it always had to be on the table. And I know when I would be like using it on the table, if I touched the table, it would like move. <laughs> so it broke. Like literally the part that holds the camera, um, as I was filming has some stuff. As I was done, I was taking the camera off and the plastic the whole, it was plastic too that was holding the camera in place shattered like it broke into a bunch of pieces and um yeah I just said you know what screw it I went immediately and I bought a really good tripod so that is also going to allow me to move around wherever I want to go because I don't need a table in front of me to put my camera <laughs> so that was a purchase I had to get um it is um I can't remember the brand right now. Again, I'll post a link to the tripod I bought um, because I'm telling you it, it was worth the money. It was a few hundred dollars and it was worth it because it goes up to like seven feet tall. So not that I need it to be seven feet high, but it will go up to seven feet um, when you extend it. The other thing I bought was for making belts for my dresses. Like I have a lot of leftover material. However, I have um, some vintage resin belt buckle slides, I guess. I think they're meant more for scars actually than belts. Um, and I did test a belt out on it. It just slides out constantly every time I like bend over or even move a little bit. So I want to make proper belts with um, the little holes in it. And I want to learn actually how to make resin belt buckles you can make the ones that actually do have um i don't know what that's called the little tom i don't know what it's called that goes into the holes basically um or i want to buy you know i'll buy vintage ones right anyway so i went ahead and i got myself a punch and um the eyelet setter and i bought these both at michael's they're actually meant for leather um, but I know that when you properly make a belt, you're putting belting in between the fabric and you do need a proper punch to get through all of those layers. So I have bought that. I bought the eyelet size that is meant probably for belts. It is, um, it does not say. I don't know. I eyeballed it. It looked right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I bought that. And the other thing I bought, and I think everyone should have one of these, and I did have one of these, uh, years ago when I moved in with my husband, oh, not husband at the time, but um, I had a portfolio, like an artist portfolio, full of all of my rulers, my graphic design rulers, and all of my French curves, and a whole bunch of other sewing rulers, um, like this one included. Um, it was a blue one, the one that I had. Um, I bought this a while ago. I replaced this one a while ago. I've also replaced all of my French seam 
or sorry, French curve rulers. Um, because I lost that portfolio at some point in the move. I do not know where it went. <laughs> this is the second time a art portfolio has gone missing during a move. The first one had all of my photos and negatives. I actually have a diploma in photography and um, yeah, I don't know why I didn't store the negatives separately from the photos. I did not. Lesson learned. We'll never do that again. Uh, yeah, so I thought I would learn that lesson again with the other portfolio and pack these separately. I did not. Anyways, the one ruler that was missing um, was a pattern pattern maker. You probably can't see it very well if it's see-through. Um, hold on. Nope, still can't see it. Oh well. <laughs> um, it is a pattern maker uh, ruler and it was the only one I didn't have and I have since replaced it. This one's in centimeters. Um, I think I might still buy another one in inches just so I have both. Uh, but yeah. Replaced this finally. It took me years. Years. <laughs> this was the more expensive of the French curve rulers to get. So that was my little mini haul, I guess if you want to call it, as well as uh, an update on what's going on with me as well as what I finished making. Uh, I also have a whole bunch of stuff cut out from the fabric, which is part of the whittling down process. Um, so I do still have, um, and they're all things that are, well, part of them are still things that I was working on. Um, but one of them is a dress. Uh, I used the rest of the fabric I was going to use for my husband's uh, yoke from his Presley shirt. Instead of shoving it back into my stash, I actually cut out a dress from that. So, And then um, I'm going to use part of the stash for the final Haslam top. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to whittle through that stash. Although I am going to warn you right now, I'm going to be buying Halloween fabric. <laughs> Because I do want to make, um, every October I make myself a Halloween outfit or two. And this year I'm doing separates. I'm going to do uh, a couple of tops and a skirt. Which also reminds me, upcoming, when it comes to that, I'm going to be doing a Halloween skirt. And I'm going to be doing a Cricut tutorial, how I use Cricut for sewing. Or, you know, one of the things I use my Cricut for, for sewing, um, to create that skirt. So that's also coming soon. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, this was my little video about my haul and what I've completed. I was hoping it was going to be a shorter video. I see it is not. <laughs> I tend to waffle on, um, but you know, a few updates in there as well. So I hope you're having an amazing day and an amazing end of July. I hope August is amazing for you. It's rolling around tomorrow. The heat has broke here in Toronto. It's actually very comfortable out right now. We have our windows open. Yeah, so keep sewing, keep knitting, keep creating, and stay kitschy. See you later. Bye.